Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get this thing underway. We have for you episode 22 of Logic Live using Flame with Shotgun. And Logic Live is brought to you by Synesis, solutions, development, integration, and support. You can find out all about the remote workflow solutions at synesis.io, supporting Flame artists since 1997. These guys have been my personal uh, uh, reseller for 15 years and could not do what we do with, uh, without them, especially these days. So uh, thanks very much to Synesis for always sponsoring Logic Live. And uh, I'd also like to welcome back our friends at actionvfx.com. You guys may remember that they sponsored prizes for One Frame of White and You've Got to Be Kidding contest last year. These guys have the best stock footage for VFX and with what's going on right now, stock footage is more useful than ever. Uh, actually, let me stop this share and show you their site. I love this. Uh, I just used uh, two of their clips in, where did I put it? There we go. I just used two of their clips, uh, bought two of their clips rather for a project that I worked on. Uh, everything is super high quality, uh, 2K, 4K, some stuff is 6K. Uh, everything's organized by uh, by categories. Let's see, I just bought, um, again, for this project I've been working on for like the last month, a couple of snow clips. I got them in 4K. And uh, what's wild, in fact, it was this one here, Falling Snow Close 3, just so you guys can see, uh, you know, 2K was 10 bucks and 4K was $20. 4K, 6K rather, is $20. So. Uh, an incredible, incredible value. Um, uh, Action VFX creates top of the line assets for professional artists and filmmakers. They combine their love for filmmaking with their technical expertise to maintain the industry's highest standards. Uh, they actually have something that's super awesome. I mean, you can, uh, in addition to getting individual clips, they also sell their collections. And uh, you can also get the Action VFX Drive, which is everything that they sell, their entire library, and you own it forever. Uh, and they have a pretty big announcement to make. So I'm going to play that for you here. I said I love to complicate this. Okay. I say I'm going to play that for you here. And I'm going to play that for the suspense. I'm building. This is a thing. We build the suspense. Hold on. Go back, go back, there we go. So yeah, actionvfx.com is having a surprise sale, 25 to 50% off everything from August 17th to the 20th. So go to actionvfx.com. Uh, and shop now. Thanks guys so much for supporting the Logic community. We really appreciate it. ActionVFX.com. So today we have, uh, like I said, we have Using Flame with Shotgun and we have some, some fabulous guests uh, joining us. Uh, two of my favorite people to visit every time I'm out in LA with Alan Terry and Jesse Morrow from Instinctual in LA. And uh, if you guys want to join uh, and uh, join our little party here, it'd be great to see hey. you. There, there they are. Yeah. Jesse, hey guys. They're socially distanced right now, uh, yet emotionally close as always. And uh, we also have joining us Alex Arce from Autodesk, who, here he is, is also our musical director in addition to, uh, thank you, Alex, in addition to uh, uh, the, our shotgun product specialist. So uh, again, welcome to the show, everybody. There's highs all around in the chat for you guys. And um, Actually, Alan and Jesse, why don't you tell us a little bit about Instinctual and what you Go for it, Jesse. Um, we are a pretty small studio in LA. We're located in Hollywood. Um, we mainly do, we do a lot of work for Sony marketing. We do most of the Columbia, TriStar, and um, Stage 6 uh, trailers that go th out theatrically. Um, and then on top of that, we have a um, our kind of core business that we started that Alan and I started where we do um, pretty much last minute visual effects and cosmetic work for uh, feature films and some started to do some um, series as well. So it's kind of the core of our business. Cool. 
I remember uh, like the first time I, I met you guys or went over to your studio, and this is years ago. I think it might have even been in the, in the previous location. <clears throat> and you were showing me how you use shotgun, and I had never seen it before, and it just kind of blew my mind. And so uh, I know anytime shotgun comes up, you know, shotgun with flame, your guys' names always come up in the conversation. And so, uh, you know, I, I love to see how you guys are, how you guys use shotgun in production. Or actually, yeah, I should I ask, maybe, maybe before we get started, um, uh, and, and this is really a question for the chat, is there anybody who uh, has never heard of shotgun before? Uh, I mean, outside of the firearms, you know, con context, um, just so we know, like, you know, everybody's level. It seems like just from the names that uh, it's at least a known, a known phenomenon. All right, cool. Why don't, we, why don't we just get started? Then you guys take us through, uh, you know, how you use shotgun with flame in production. All right. So first, what I'm going to show is like an out of the box as you would get with just creating a brand new shotgun site and how flame works. So no customizations, just really basic, simple. This is what everybody can do. Uh, without really any effort at all. Um, so, there I go. All right, so do you guys see my screen? Yep. All right, so uh, one thing I recommend everybody who is interested in shotgun, just sign up for a trial site and make it like a test site. So don't call it the name of what you, what your final site will be. So like, don't call it, you know, company, your company name dot shotgun studio dot com call it company test one or company test or whatever because it's free for i think 32 or 33 days and basically what you want to do is you want to go in there and you want to try and break it you want to break this site because you want to go through and find out what all the menus do what all the buttons do what all the functions do and break it and then start another one and keep doing that until you're comfortable with it and once you're comfortable then create your final site that you're actually going to pay for um, and they're really cool. Like I've probably created 30 different sites that I let expire over time. And, and they're really cool about that. They don't care. Um, and it's all free. So for, yeah. you know, Alan, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you right out of the gate, but I think it's important just to uh, let everybody know, especially uh, anybody who hasn't really used shotgun is that, uh, you know, it, it's an extremely uh, rich and diverse tool set. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's just like anything else. I, I like to think about it in our, in our business, you know, when you first dive into Maya or into flame or into, Houdini or anything, uh, it's just that it can be overwhelming at first, all the buttons and all the columns and all the options and all the pages. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, you, you, you very quickly learn uh, what parts of shotgun you need to use and how to um, filter it and customize it so you only see the information that you really need to see to help keep your project organized, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's right. Um, it, it, there's so much that you could do with shotgun. It's a little bit more complex than some of the other alternatives, but that complexity has so much power to it. You can really customize it to however you want, whereas some of the other alternatives are it's one way. And if that doesn't work for you, then you're done. Um, so uh, I created a, a site yesterday called Logic Demo. You see it here. And this is exactly how you would get it after you sign up. So I've done nothing to this site um, at all. It's right out of the box from the factory. And I'm just gonna, first thing you need to do if you want shotgun integration is make a project. So I just go projects, new project, and I'm just gonna call it test 23. And doesn't matter really. And I'm just gonna choose this VFX film template. Um, that choosing a template, it's kind of outside the scope, but it doesn't matter in regards to the shotgun publishing that we're gonna be doing it. It just kind of sets up some film tasks that somebody at shotgun has thought well this is what every film needs so it just kind of pre it's a preset um, and you just create create that project so there you are okay so now that project is created i've also downloaded and installed a shotgun studio oh sorry not shotgun studio sorry shotgun desktop um previously here on my Linux machine and I've already logged in. You can see here, I've already logged into that. I'll just do it real quick. Um, you put in your shotgun site URL here and your username and password. Quinn says it's got that new site smell. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Now we'll go break it. So you can see now that that brand new project is showing up here in shotgun desktop and if you click on it and I'm using Linux. It should behave the same on the Mac. I'm not sure. I've, we've never done any of this on a Mac. 
Um, we've only done it on Linux. It automatically goes through and finds all the um, applications that it supports that are already installed um, on your machine. So I did not enter any of these manually. It found them. And it will also list multiple versions. So you see, I have two versions of Flame here, and it will list those. And it, by default, it will always use the most recent version. And if you have any beta versions, be careful, because you probably don't want to be launching the beta versions, and it would do that automatically. So just go here and choose that. So now Flame should be getting launched. Give it a second. There you go. Um, now that doesn't really do much other than launch it. Like you might think, well, I'm, I've already chosen the project that I'm in in Shock and Desktop, so it should figure that out, but it doesn't really. Um, it's just, sorry, hold on. It wouldn't be a demo. It would not yeah. be a demo if we didn't have a flame crash. Exactly. It's just not finding my uh, centralized stone you. wire machine. Which is awesome, by the way. If anybody yeah, hasn't already checked it out, go into there Alan's go. YouTube. Uh, go to Alan's YouTube uh, channel and check out his uh, his central stone and wire. It's game uh, life changing. Okay, so I have to choose which stone and wire server I'm using, but most people would just be set to local host. And here now I have to create a project. So I'm just going to create that project here and choose a couple options, which are not terribly relevant to this shotgun demo, but we need to choose for making the site for the project. Um, okay, so I'm just launching into Flame as normal. You can see that now this little shotgun integration window is here in the bottom right, which is indicating that at least it's shotgun, uh, shotgun enabled, although the project itself hasn't yet been enabled. So um, what we wanna do now is to tie this Flame project into the project in Shotgun. So there's th two ways to do that. One, I already created the project on the Shotgun site, so I'm just gonna choose it and hit attach. But the other way is you can create the Shotgun project right here from within Flame. I always do it the first way. I always make it first on the website and then attach the Flame project to that as opposed to create it through Flame. Um, and the reason why is because we have our actual Shotgun site is a lot of customization and some of that customization requires that we do that procedure where we create it first on shotgun site, not from within flame. So in this case, I'm just gonna attach this test 23. And once it finishes, now I'm gonna launch it. And if you don't see shotgun uh, as an option when you first start up flame, you just need to enable it. You can do that with the flame setup application. That's right. At least your PBO pool is being initialized. That, that's got to make you feel very good. Yeah, I do it very well too. Um, so then <laughs> you want to go through here and just make sure that you see these, li these items listed here. If when you go to shotgun and it says enabled, well then that project has not yet been enabled for shotgun and then select it and it will do that. But since I already logged into shotgun desktop and launched it through shotgun desktop, um, now this project is shotgun enabled because you can see all these options. So that's the first step and that's pretty straightforward. I have prepped a timeline that I'm gonna grab. It's like the lasagna that you has been baking in the oven. Mm. It wouldn't be a flame demo if we didn't reference the lasagna in the oven, you know, analogy. Oh, excellent okay. use of the discrete font. Yeah, definitely. I'm really good with that too. So <laughs> I have set up three, three test shots here. They have 10 frame handles. And very important that you name not only the, the uh, element, but then the segment. So it has both a, a, a name and a shot name. Yep. So that's really important. Without doing that, things will break and it probably won't work. So you can see that I've named the element, this the shot number and then underscore BG. And then each one has a shot name itself. And once that's done, it's pretty simple. Just go here, export. And I'm going to go to where I want it to go. And then you go sequence publish. And in this case, I'm just going to use an Autodesk preset. Uh, we have our own custom presets for our file system and hierarchy. 
but for this demonstration, I really wanted to show out of the box functionality. So I'm just gonna go uh, shop publish uh, job directories. And then one thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure here that create batch is turned on. The Autodesk preset has it off and that causes a lot of problems for people. So you wanna turn this on and then basically you just hit export. Uh, because we work off of the centralized stone and wire, it can't do the link media. So we get this little warning every time that it has to create um, new media. And that's fine for us. It, functionally, it doesn't matter. It just uses up a little bit more disk space, but that's fine. And then you get this window. You don't have to do anything here other than hit publish. Yeah, all of this stuff can be customized. You know, your, your, your path structure, your folder structure, where you put stuff, it all can be customized. But it's so important when you're first trying this to just use the defaults that come right out of the box. You know, but yeah. you, can, you can get lost in the customization, you know, but first just, just, just let, it, let it do its thing, embrace it for what it is. And uh, yeah. this, this, this first step here, publishing to Shotgun, sending your clips to the site, this takes a little while, but you really only do it once. And it's, you know, it's, it's part of like the, 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 it's the first step in your project, right? Yeah, it, it does take longer than you would imagine, but it just creates a bunch of tasks and back burner, and then you just let it do its thing in the background and it doesn't really um, interfere with you. Like a good client. <laughs> What a knowing chuckle. I will read into that. Okay, so that's done. And like I said, it creates, it just created about 17 tasks and back burner just to publish those three shots. So some of those tasks take a little bit to, um, to complete. But what I wanna show is now, if I go into my project on shotgun, and I go to my sequences, I now have a sequence that is the same name as the timeline. So your timeline in flame equates to a sequence in shotgun. So you have to start to understand those hierarchies. And then if I go into the sequence and then the shot list, I now have three shots here that have been entered automatically in shotgun. And the thumbnail is currently empty because those generation tasks are happening in the background on back burner and they haven't finished yet. So let's see. All right, so you can see that now one of them is starting to get up there. This is just a still frame right now, but shortly as those tasks finish in back burner, there we go. You'll see that, there we go. So now, a QuickTime thumbnail of that shot has been automatically uploaded and registered into Shotgun attached to that shot. And in this view, this view is really cool because you could start to make notes and those notes get entered um, into Shotgun automatically. Then the next thing is, well, round tripping. So I've now published the shots into Shotgun and now I'm gonna comp on them. And how does that round trip work? Well, because I clicked create desktop, it's now made these three batch setups for me. So if I go in here, we see the shot one, and I'm just gonna add a color corrector node in there just to make a very visual change. And if I hit render. Yep, when the batch group was created, it created that right node, that right node is, yes. right node is pre-populated with all the metadata needed to do this. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And then and so um, now you ahead. see at the, at the end of the render, it now prompts me to publish this comp to shotgun, which I'm gonna do. And that's done. And then if we go back here, let's say if we look at the activity for this shot one, which is what I just rendered, you'll see that here is the original publish and here is this batch publish that I just made and things haven't uploaded yet. So once that's done, that will get filled in with um, the QuickTime thumbnail of that shot. And you'll also see that of a new version has been entered for that batch render. So now um, that comp has is become attached as a version to that shot. So but that's basically the round trip. 
Um, one other way to do this, I'll show real quickly, is sometimes it's not really efficient to register every render because you're iterating a lot as you're getting things set up and you don't want to spam your version history. So you can turn off that write node and add a render node here and then render that. And if you like that render, you can then attach just the right node to that render and then republish that. So that way you're not just filling up this render list of, you know, like, you know, you're in comp 72 and it's it, none of it has actually been necessary because it's all just set up iterations. Well, now you can just, you know, use the right note as basically a, a forced publish of just the kind you like, uh, the, the render you like. So you, you can keep your version history um, more concise. And, and all that stuff that you see in Shotgun there, like basically what, what, what's being published to Shotgun, what's being sent to Shotgun is the render itself, but also yeah. the dot .clip file uh, yeah. or, or a reference to the dot .clip file, then also the batch setup. Um, there are ways to integrate all that stuff within Shotgun and Flame. You, you can yeah. load your setups, you know, load your batch setups via the Shotgun desktop if you want to, but again, don't do that on day one. Uh, no. Those are some more of the advanced integrations and, and, yeah. and workflows. Yeah, if you go under the Publishes tab, you can now see all the different things that it's actually registering. So the dot clip for the shot, the batch for the shot, the dot clip for the background clip, and then the render. And so if you go on the versions, you'll now see that all the different versions of, of the comp that I made are now there. And you can make notes on individual versions. So it's really good for shot feedback and getting it tied specifically to the actual version of the shot that somebody reviewed, as opposed to generic notes that might not apply to each you know, version. Version two might have different notes than version three. Mm -hmm. So, and that's like the basics, right? Like it's actually works out of the box. It's, we call it in the Flame community, we call it zero config. In shotgun community, they call it the basic config. Um, I like zero config better because literally it's zero configuration. All you do is type in your username and password and then it just works. And yep. it's been great for us, very reliable. Uh, I've got a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, okay. First from, from Andy Davis says, uh, this used to be broken, but uh, does it now save the whole setup even if not connected to the, to the right node? Um, I don't know. I, I And Alex, feel free to jump in if... Uh, well, we always hit iterate, right? So we're, the way we save is by hitting iterate. Mm -hmm. We don't utilize the batch setup that's saved out of the right node. So as mm -hmm. long as you're hitting iterate here, uh, that works the same, everything is saved. But if you're trying to load the batch setup that's written out from the right node, that I don't know, because it's not a workflow we use. Yeah, and that's it's, it's an important thing to, I guess, to also, uh, uh, remember or know, and I, I learned this during my own personal shotgun journey, is like um, the right file uh, node there needs to have the uh, include setup and open clip buttons turned on so that the shotgun integration can work. But it doesn't mean you have to use that stuff. It just needs to be written in order, you know, for shotgun to do its thing. Really important to know. Um, Maury is wondering, does this integrate with BFX? Never done that. Right We've never done that, but I would say probably recommend more of a pattern browse approach for that so that your your shot is referencing the pattern browse output of the right node. Yeah, BFX is really good when you're kind of managing the whole timeline in one spot and updating lots of shots, but Shotgun and the whole published workflow is designed more for distributed work, like what Alan's setting up. You know, even though he did the round trip on his own computer, it could have been two or three other artists contributing to that same shot. I have used cool. batch effects where you pull in exactly what Alan did with the render node, where you pull the batch effects back into your into a batch group and kind of mm -hmm. incorporate it that way. Yep. Yeah. And then, but like you said, that it's kind of made for shot based workflows, which kind of lends itself to to uh, individual batch groups for the shots, right? Cool. Um, I think that was it. So if anybody, yeah. So uh, if anybody has any other questions. Any other questions, feel free to drop them in here or in the Q&A panel. And um, Alan, fire away.
Yeah, so, so we've got so the that's basics the, now. Yeah, so that's the basics. That's exactly how you can get it from shotgun with doing nothing, from shotgun and, auto, and flame, literally not having to do anything. That's how it works. Um, then what I'm going to show is our site and some of our tools, how we've customized it. Um, because what's missing here is any type of automated programmatic folder structure. That's a big one. Um, certain customize, customizations to the UI of Shotgun, and then some advanced tools for things that are unique to our film workflow, which we don't have time to get into too much, but Jesse's going to go over just a little bit. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log out of uh, this site on Shotgun Desktop and log into our production site. Um, Jack Horrocks, while you're doing this, Alan, Jack actually just wrote a question in the chat here. Um, everybody, just a reminder, please set your uh, chat window to two all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see it. But Jack was wondering, how does it come back into the timeline if another artist works on the shot? That's kind of uh, uh, taken care of by the, the, the published workflow or the pattern browsing workflow, as long as that artist is set up yeah. properly to, to so, write so a new version. To, in, oh, go ahead, Alan. Uh, actually, Jesse could answer that because he kind of deals with all of that, but I think it would have to do with the back published dot clip or, well, Jesse, you want to talk about that? Yeah, it's a dot clip workflow. So when you publish it out, the shot gets and you can see it in that list of stuff that is getting published. A dot clip gets published with the original shot publish. And then what happens is that when you use the right node to, to version up and publish a new version of a shot, it actually is knows that that dot clip exists and it updates that dot clip. Then in the timeline, the back publish um, is what you get back from the original publish. There is going to be two tracks there. The first track will be all of your elements. And then the second track is the, it's basically the result of the dot clip that's on top. And that's the element that's going to be updated as you version. So what we do is I, when I'm prepping timelines, I'll have, you know, all my raw clips on on track one then i'll have like managed track um elements on track two with different layers and that's what i'll end up publishing and then on top of that i'll have my dot clip publishes and um those you can duplicate and put into other cuts too so you can actually do a much better workflow without using batch effects but using the batch um, groups because of the dot clips files that are made when you um, do the initial publish. Yeah, and as long as everybody uh, follows the right pattern and the right directory structure and the right naming, as long as it's set up properly, uh, even if you're writing out sequences from Nuke or uh, After Effects, it doesn't matter. Uh, they'll show up in the uh, in the flame timelines. Yeah, the, the really the hardest part of this, getting this workflow working, especially in a customized um, you know, uh, file path and, you know, things that are outside of the built-in shot publisher is figuring out the initial published settings that you need to use. And, you know, that's going to take some trial and error, but as long as you have that um, button turned on, that's like make batch and you've set those paths in the export window, um, it will work. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some of the customizations that we've done on our site. Um, so the first thing is we needed a predictable and automated folder structure. So uh, we had a custom tool written for that. Um, and that requires us to set up our projects with some very specific um, fields and entities that are not normal um, for out of the box shotgun. So um, first I'll just kind of, I'll go through that, how we create a project. Um, if you look here, I'm, I'm going to create a project. I'm just going to call it test 30. So right now we don't have a test 30. We just have a test publish. So I'm going to hit add project and I'm going to give it a name, test 30. And because of the uh, site customizations we've done, we've made uh, our own template here called INS zero config template. So I got to choose that. And then because we have to work in a secure environment, every project has their own security group. So um, that's where you would enter the security group for a specific project. So for this, I haven't made a unique security group. We have a generic one 
called flamers, which is for stuff that doesn't really actually have to be um, all that secure. So for instance, I'm just gonna type that in here. So it's gonna be attached to the flamer security group. And because we might have multiple NAS or SAN volumes, we wanna tell um, Shotgun where this project is gonna live. And so for now, I'm gonna put uh, this project on our um, vol projects, which is our kind of our master NAS. And then if I wanted to, I could add additional users here. So I could add Jesse to this project and I could add Doug if I wanted to add to this project and then hit that. And so it's gonna take a few seconds to make the project on Shotgun and then to notify um, our Shotgun plugin that's locally here. But now you can see that test 30 um, folder has been made. And inside of that is our initial uh, skeleton folder structure. Um, and we work on three different types of projects here. We work on visual effects, we work on movie trailers, and we do some movie DIs. And so each one of those is gonna have their own unique folder structure. But what's been made at this step is an overall global skeleton folder structure. So then the next step is we gotta tell Shotgun and our plugin, all right, what kind of project this is gonna be? And we're calling them campaigns. So you can think of a campaign as, if the project is the master container, then the campaign is the next container under that. And uh, again, we could have, that could be an episode, that could be a particular campaign for a week, a month. It, it, the, the name and the structure is anything you want, but what it defines is the type of, of project with the underlying folder structure. So for this campaign, I'm just gonna call it VFX. And then I have to t tell it what type of campaign it is out of the three different types that we work on. So I'm gonna say that's a VFX campaign. And I'm gonna click that. And now if I go into campaigns, you'll see it's made VFX with the skeleton folder structure for that, right? So what we do is we just keep, you know, filtering down more and more to create the structure of the project and everything underlying there. Then the next thing is we're gonna define a sequence. And remember the sequence is your timeline. So for our workflow, there's two ways to define the sequence in the, zero config way there's only there's one way to define the sequence and that's by publishing the timeline for us there's two ways you could predefine the sequence or you can let flame um, publish it if we predefine the sequence here i'm just going to call it sequence 01 i'm going to attach it to a campaign because it's in our vfx campaign i'm going to create that Give it a second. There we go. Now sequence one folder structure has been made and there's a whole hierarchy of things under there, but no shots. Now let me start flame and I'll show you how that works. And when you're starting up flame, shotgun is really uh, built around that structure. Uh, again, I learned this on my, my journey, you know, uh, you have a project and the project needs to contain in this case campaigns, but sometimes it can be episodes. Like you said, it, it's anything at all. Um, mm -hmm. And thinking backwards, you know, as flame artists, we think about shots, you know, uh, shots need a sequence in order to exist, you know, and a sequence yes. needs a campaign and a campaign needs a project, you know, uh, we yeah. also in shotgun, there's the whole notion of tasks, you assign tasks to shots, but they can't just live by themselves. So sequence, shots, tasks, it's, it's a structure that you have to kind of embrace. Um, and once you do it, 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 it really all comes into, into focus and is a wonderful yeah, tool. Even yeah, if, even if you're working on only shots, you still have to contain them in a sequence, mm -hmm. especially for, for Flame publishing. Like literally they have to be in a sequence for Flame to publish it. So yeah. I'm just gonna that was one of those that things I, uh, That was one of those things I just did not understand or I fought against at the beginning. I don't need a sequence, I'm only doing shots and it just made it confusing for me. So once I let go, it, it, it all made sense. All right, so I have the same exact clip here. And remember, this is called your sequence. So that's the literal sequence name, not, not the one that I just made. This is like the who's on first of visual effects here. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna put that in that test 30 folder and I'm gonna put it in the proper campaign and proper sequence. So you see the sequence one that I previously made on the Shotgun website, but this is gonna be a new sequence. And I'm gonna use um, the preset that Jesse has come up with and is using. 
um, now. And that's our custom instinctual preset, which is mostly just like um, folder structure names, you know, paths basically. There's not any real magic to this other than getting the pathing that you want. And I'm gonna hit export. And same thing, basically it's just gonna go through and do it same thing. But what we could look at, if I can find that tab. There we go. Um, okay, so in this case, because we're pre publishing the sequence with flame, we haven't yet engaged the shotgun folder structure part of that. What you see here with this your sequence folder was actually made by flame. So that's part of that template preset that Jesse has made. And then it's made the shots itself. And this is all from flame itself right now and some base folders because we, I have yet to engage uh, our folder maker, our automated folder maker because the folder maker needs to be able to attach a sequence to a campaign. And when you pre-publish in Flame, this is what Flame created, but you'll see that the campaign has not been attached because the shotgun publisher in Flame has no concept of a campaign. So for us, when we, when we publish sequences out of Flame, the next thing we have to do is come through and attach it to a sequence. And once that, uh, sorry, attach the sequence to a campaign. And once the sequence has been attached to a campaign, then our folder maker knows how to do the structure. Then it knows, okay, this thing belongs there, and then it takes care of it. And so if we go back here, you'll now see that since I attached that shot and sequence to a campaign, it now will fill out the rest of the folder structure with everything that we want, because now it knows, okay, it's, uh, project, campaign, sequence, and then shot. Where when you publish it out of Flame, the sequence is disconnected from the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that point, it's pretty much the same. The pretty much the same round tripping. Um, we've customized the shotgun uh, website UI a bit for, um, sorry, for our purposes. Um, but other than that, you know, now it's all just basic, you know, built-in flame publishing, batch round tripping, and things like that. And to answer yeah. answer da Dashiell's question, yes, we're using Shotgun Event Daemon to create the folders, but with a custom Shotgun Event plugin. The daemon in itself does not have that functionality at all. Gotcha. Cool stuff. Does anybody else have any other questions before we move on? All right. Jess, you want to go over some stuff? Yeah, so you want to exit out of this um, desktop and I'll start up um, in that desktop, kind of just go over quickly the what I do once the shots are. Uh, so I basically, I, I do a lot of the management, shot management um, and producing of um, the shows here. So I end up spending a, a ton of time in um, Shotgun. And the first thing that I'll, I'll, I'm going to circle back just to show you guys um, how to use. Are you out of that, Helen? Okay. Um, let's see here. I won't do that yet. While Jesse's working on that, um, Andy had another question. Andy Davis, not, I'm not. I haven't reached the point yet of my celebrity of referring to myself in the third person, but um, it says shotgun loader can load, can work with clips. Do you guys have any experience using it to load um, FBX cameras or geo into flame? Um, I, we've done it in um, nuke, but in flame, no. Um, mostly what we use the loader for is if there's like, let's say you're, you have a shot that you've already started working on and the plates change. Then what you can do is you can, I could, publish out, let's say I want to keep the original plates, but you know, another plate comes in another element and I want to add that to the shot. I can publish that out and then I can have the artist, um, like the way we normally use is on Roto, right? So you, you send out Roto, you get the Roto plates back. I pull those into flame and I check them against the original plates to make sure that they're the right length, that they're numbered right. 
I also then give it a shot name and I call it like, you know, Roto One as a segment name. And then I'll publish that out. And then the flame artist can use the loader to actually just load in um, the, the, the element that I've just um, published. So that's, that's mostly how we've been using it. It's such so great that you guys do that. I'm dying to implement that on our end because we still have uh, the, like our producer when we get Roto back is, you know, emailing a path, you know, and then uh, yeah. if, if everything is logged into shotgun, then you could use the loader, select the shot you're working on. And there are the clips or assets or whatever that, uh, that, you know, that you need. There's a, what shotgun starts to do is it starts to, as you get more experience in using it, it starts to, um, it's a free flow of information between artists and you don't necessarily need as many producers and assistants and um, people to wrangle the data for you because that data is already pretty much in one centralized place, which is shotgun. All right, so I'm up here. I got this. Uh, now let me share this with you guys. Okay. Um, so this is this is what Alan just published, and this basically this underscore publish. This is kind of the magic. Like this top layer are the dot clips. So these these containers are pointing back at the dot clip files, and so when I get this back, what I'll do is I'll name this shot name, and then I'll give it a uh, source version name, and I'll turn that to dynamic. And then what happens as um, as people start to version up the uh, the comps, so we have this. So this is the instinctual look here. I think is what we're seeing. Yeah, now. pink. <laughs> this happens to be Alan's favorite color too. I yes. Yeah. I, I see. You know, I see it now. <laughs> Um, okay, so this now has been, I just published out a new version of the shot and then back in the timeline. Um, and right now you can see on here as it goes through these, the, the update, uh, let's see, one of these items is to update the dot clip file. I think it's down below. Um, and that's what that's doing. All right, so we're good to go. And then in here, um, I'll start to get my versions. And also now, because I've named the, that, that clip with um, a dynamic source version name, it'll update and I can see what uh, version I'm working on, which is really handy when I'm doing like deliverables or like I need to check well, what, what did we send to the client before? Did we address the note properly? Um, we just can switch it there. What other oh, God, I never what? thought to use that. Oh, that's like this mis the missing link in my published workflow. It was like, you know, I never knew. I, I'd have to alt-click on the thing to, to, to see what version. Oh, my God. Sorry. Yeah. And, and, Sorry. and this is also why it's really important that you don't want to just publish every render. Right, because mm -hmm. that list would get jammed up with a bunch of renders that are completely meaningless. So that's why we use the disconnected render node type or disconnected write node workflow, because that way the artist can choose, okay, now I'm submitting this version for review or for whatever. But if you have that thing connected and you just jam in the render all the time, you're gonna have two, three hundred, you know, versions of which ninety-five percent of them are crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one other good point about this is sometimes this gets stuck and what you have to do is update the source first. So if you go in here, you're like, I'm expecting to see something and you don't see, you know, your versions coming up, it especially happens like when you first do this, because it's kind of set to original. Um, you just have to click the layer and go to source version, update sources, and that'll usually kick it in so that you can see it. Yeah, and it'll um, outline in, um, it'll highlight like outline in white there if there is something new, right? Yeah, exactly. Kind of like this one you can see here. I don't know. The first one you can see it's kind of outlined. That's kind of mm -hmm. telling me that there's um, been an update to on the timeline. Cool. Um, one other issue that we ran into that I'll just hit real quick is that we always have to deliver um, version zero plates. 
And one of the issues is like, how do you, we run it through the, our deliverable system, which is built into Shotgun. So um, when these get first get published, they all come back into Flame with version one. So if you do need to get a version two, what you can do is delete the back published um, batch group, and then you can open up the batch group here. Um, so you're basically just removing what was published on the desktop. And then once you do that, you can set it, it will come in as a version zero. Oh, great tip. So, that's great. So that's a good, um, and then once you, you can just publish it back out and now you've got version zeros that are logged into shotgun for your delivery. So those are just two quick uh, points. Um, now I guess I'll switch over to the actual shotgun um, desktop here. Give me one sec. Another question from Dashiell. Can your artists load the sequences or timelines with the dot clip tracks on their own flames, even if the flame didn't create the timeline? Yeah. So what we do is um, when I set up shots for other artists, I'll, I'll take these timelines and duplicate them and put them in a shared library. Since we're all working on the same project, there will be these shared libraries that say like, you know, example clips or whatever they want. Oh, and I also put them in... When I do the shot um, setup, I'll um, put the dot clip back into the actual um, shot itself. Mm -hmm. and, and I want, Jesse, can you go to the right node? Because I want to show Richard, he asked the question about iterations. Yeah. So see how Jesse set the, iterations to follow iteration, that should be the only option. The fact that it's set to custom version by default and that it's even there is insanity. The only thing you ever want is that your write file output matches the iteration version of the batch setup. Yeah, so when we iterate, um, this, you can start to see it updating here. So now the batch name matches the render name. And these are being saved on disk. So what will happen is that you'll start to see, um, I'm looking at the wrong shot, but as we iterate, you'll start to see the iterations that if you need to, you can get to later on. Um, but these, my point of, on these is that you can take the dot clips and you can um, put them into, back into your batches and then the artist can see what they're actually, publishing on to, um, let's see here. They can start to see what they're publishing on to disk. And if you wanna update it here, you can do that here. So you can see, okay, this is what I updated and this is what um, we're gonna have in the review, so. And I'll usually put a like nice little note here that says like top on it so that the artist knows what they can, you know, can see it. Mm -hmm. But, and it's updated. Right. That's great. Yeah. And uh, shameless right. self-promotion. I wrote a little Python script to uh, uh, change the iteration setting on the write file nodes of any selected batch group. So that way you don't accidentally skip one. Um, it's not Alan's dream, but it's one step closer to that dream. <laughs> All right. So this is, um, thank you for that plug. Um, Again, shameless. <laughs> um, so this is, these are the shots that got published out to shotgun. Um, I'm going to show you a quick trick that you can use if you, as you start to build this up, you're going to be adding in a lot of um, custom fields. Like these are all our custom fields here. Um, and we have a kind of custom field name that we give it so we know that it's custom. Um, yeah. Uh, when we when we create a new field or entity in our shotgun, we always prepend it with our company um, abbreviation, which is INS. Because as you play with shotgun and you're gonna, you know, you use those test sites to create things, to break things. One really easy way to know, okay, I made this is by prepending a company initial to it. So any field that has SGINS means that's a custom field we made. So if we ever make a new pipeline or need to set up a, a new site, we know we gotta recreate that field. And 
you know, it doesn't get lost in what we think is the default shotgun fields. Um, so this is handy, a little handy trick too. Let's say you you create a project and, or you create it out of flame and you don't really have the chance, the option to choose a template. You can come in here after the flame, after the project's been created and you can push a template into the created project, which is also handy if you start this in, in production, you can put your customization into the project you're currently working on, and then you can push it into your template or you can push it into other um, projects. So what I'm gonna do is use the, the changes that I made on Rust City VFX, and I'm gonna push it into um, this new project that Alan made. So that'll have all of the changes that I made on the other project. And it's another possible workflow for you if you do wanna set up a, um, a template project to use, and you also want to use Flame to actually create the project, not the way that we do it, where you pre-create it. Okay, so once um, once the shots are created and published, um, I've created what's called a task template, and I'll add in our our just tasks. Um, this is pretty straightforward, and you can find out about task templates on um, Shotgun's website. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but basically what it's doing is it's adding in these tasks on, these are like tasks um, and these are the events on those tasks. So the task template kind of adds those in. So when I start to work on a show, I'll, I'll um, and you can do this all at one time too. You don't have to do it like individually like I'm doing. You can do it on like a hundred shots at one time. Um, then the way that we work is, um, once the shots in shotgun and ready to go, I'll set all these to ready to start. And as we start to have the um, artists come on board, I'll add them to the comp task. And then what we do is we have this thing called your shots. Um, and what this is, is it, this is like the heart of our shot uh, tracking for freelance artists. So if you freelance with us, you'll come in and you'll, you'll see the Your Shots page and you'll know immediately that you have three shots to work on for that day. And you can tell by, and it progresses up here from left to right. So you start on waiting to start. If you, once you start a shot, you change its status to in progress. You refresh your page. And now that shot's moved from waiting to start to now it's in progress. And for me, while I'm tracking shots during the day, I can see those, those status updates on, on my shots page. So I'll know, you know, eight artists are working on such and such shots and I can track the progression that they're going in. Once you're ready for the shot to be, once you publish a version of your shot and you're ready for it to be reviewed, we change that status to internal review. And then if you go back <laughs> the, here. The hammer of judgment, was that what that was? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so by the end of the day on a normal production day, I'll have, you know, if normally, since we're so fast at Flame, we'll have like 50 versions in one day. I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> we'll have the versions to, to review. And then what I do is I use double statuses. These are kind of shot statuses and these are the, the way that I track what I've, what we're working on, what we've sent to the client, and um, kind of where that shot is in a more global sense in regards to how we're interacting with the client. And this is more kind of how we're in working internally, where that shot is internally. Um, and then what happens is once I set, once I've in reviewed this. If it's ready to go, I'll mark it to, to ready to send. And I can do that with a batch of shots. Um, and then um, we have a deliverable system that we tie into that I can easily and quickly trigger um, deliverables on. I'm not gonna do that for this demo because it's, it's pretty complicated, but maybe at a later date, we can go into the, you know, the more, uh, the complication of, of that whole workflow. Um, and that's kind of like, that's just the like really basic generalized workflow that we use here. 
Um, do you want me to keep going and show some more stuff, Andy? I think I uh, show just quickly like some of the stuff I've been working on with bidding and stuff, or do you think? It's yeah, I'd love I'd love to see that. I, I just want to point out that uh, when you guys showed the Your Shots version two page there, it's a super powerful uh, tool in in Shotgun is to be able to create a page that only shows the information that you want to see. And in this case, you know, for the artist that happens to be working, that artist doesn't need to see anything else. Anything else is a distraction, you know, or it's confusing. And uh, I know for us uh, at Lively, we built, uh, I built page views specifically for artists and specifically for producers. Producer wants to come in and see what things are in progress and the artist wants to know what am I working on today. And, uh, and this way, it, it, it just, once you get into that business of customizing pages like this, it really, really kind of like unleashes Shotgun's power. But yeah, the, 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 one thing about ahead, Shotgun is like out of the box, it has awesome functionality for publishing to Flame, but the website default UI is horrific. It's basically a spreadsheet that you got to constantly drill down and filter and you really have to find the information you want. And so what we tried to do is make it just like you said, Somebody comes in, sits down, and all they need is presented right to them in one pane of glass. And so our, this Your Shots page that we came up with helps to do that. Um, it used to be actually even better, but they've recently deprecated the functionality, the, the widget that we were using for that. So this is like the next best thing, and it's still pretty good. Um, it still gets you there. Um, but yeah, this, this view is really important because we could stack somebody up with 10, 15 shots, and it's really easy for them to know exactly what to do. And as you can see, while Jesse was talking, I entered some notes and like yeah. each one of those notes could be like a specific subtask that they have to do on that shot that then once they do it, they can start to check it off. And it makes your like the, the information much easier to digest. So you're not wasting your time or your brain power trying to figure out what you need to do because it's all right there. It's just figuring out how to do it now. Yeah, Jesse, why don't you, we only, uh... We're, we're that, almost that's time, a good but point. Why don't you show us a couple yeah. more? A couple more. Uh, All right, let me show you this. Um, so, um, so we built in. I've I built in a. a I created a bid um, system within Shotgun, and this is really powerful because it gets you away from having to have separate bid and separate shot tracking. So what you can it's pretty simple. These are calculated fields. Um, you add the you add um, fields customized fields and you can build this up um, and then once these once I start to put in values uh, so this some um, this shot we're saying okay if we sent this to India we're going to pay two dollars a frame that's going to be our actual cost you know I'm going to I'm going to upcharge that a little bit you know to like eight dollars a frame or five whatever and so I can really quickly start to build up a bid um, right within um, shotgun um let's say we want to charge a dollar to prep the frame a dollar to deliver the frame and we're really cheap and we're fifty dollars an hour um, and then we put a multiplier like it's an easy shot now you can start to see costs and the the great thing about this is it's ultimately tied to the status of the shot so if the producer calls you and says i want to omit shot one and you haven't delivered anything you can just omit it here and, and within about you know, 30 seconds, you can um, tell them what the shot count was and you can, um, I have to do this, but um, you can get really real-time feedback of where you're at on costs and on total costs or total shot count. So, um, And then um, one thing that's cool about Shotgun is you can use this, you can design pages. So it defaults to kind of a shots page and you can define all of these different fields, but you can also duplicate that view. And then you can start to make up your own um, page views. Um, so that's what I did with the bid. And each one of these fields is also permissioned. So only I can see those um, the bid fields and you can do that with any field in shotgun. Um, the next thing I'll show you real quick because and I'm just speeding through this is when I'm bidding I'll, I'll usually get a um, Excel document and it'll have like 
you know, from it'll have the what we need to do and you can set up these Excel documents to um, this Excel document is designed to import notes. So I've made up some notes um, that I want to put on the shots. And what this can do is like you can really quickly populate um, shotgun with notes for your entire job for every single shot and you can copy and paste those out of the documents that you can get that you normally get from your client so i just basically put three new scopes of work onto our existing um shots it's a super powerful tool uh, alex showed me this that you know you could uh, you could even um, you can import CSVs from Excel or even like you could take um, your shotgun shots page, for example, and export that, you know, maybe if there's only one shot filled and then load that into Excel and populate it with um, the data that you're getting from your client. Uh, and now it's, you know, in, in a CSV format, it's, it's already formatted for shotgun. You can then re-import that right back into shotgun and boom, everything's uh, yeah, that's how you can. That's a great point, Andy, because that's how you can figure out how to start to make these um, CSV templates that you need is by you just basically export the pages that you want with the fields you want exposed. And at the top, you'll get the, the you just have to keep these um, descriptors and then you b fill in the data down here and you can, you know, you can populate the description, all that stuff in a matter of minutes. Um, and so that's that yeah um does anybody have any does, questions or do you want me to go any depth into to any more depth or are we out of time i think we're, we're pretty much out of time uh, i'm going to see if anybody has any other questions but uh, i would definitely you know love to have you guys back to go over uh some of the more advanced stuff the the deliverable system you have and you know i know you, you showed it to me and and it's like the you know it all came from the holy grail of i don't want to fuck anything up you know, you enter the information <laughs> once into one place and it is consistent throughout the production. Uh, I have personally been involved in, you know, putting the wrong frame counts on slates and version numbers on slates and wrong file name extensions. And, you know, it's crazy. So, well, that's the great um, thing about shotgun is it's a base, it's a computerized system. So you get automatically when you publish, you get shot durations, you can get cut information you can get, you know, a wealth of data that you have to then put into to slates and stuff. And by calling on this database, you can, I mean, like we showed you yesterday, it's like, it's crazy the things that you can start to do and not fuck mm -hmm. it up. You know, yeah. I mean, that's the thing that's like, my biggest thing is I want to be able to QC the data in one place at one time and know that it's right. So I don't drive myself crazy at 1030 at night when we're trying to deliver to know if the data is actually correct, right? Mm -hmm. I do it in a clear state of mind in little bits, bite-sized chunks that then allows me to, you know, when the, when the heat is on and I'm in the heat of a delivery, I don't have to QC anything. All I have to know is that the deliverables were rendered and that there's an image there. I don't have to look at the shot name. I don't have to look at all of this like numbers and crazy stuff. And that's the yep. same thing also with like managing artists. I set it and forget it. Like at the beginning of the day, I just come in here and I assign who's gonna be working on what shots and then I can go do other things. And if there's a question, I can just query this page or another page. Mm -hmm. It's awesome stuff. Well, thank you very much, guys. And if anybody does have questions, feel free to reach out to Alan and Jesse on Logic uh, and Alex as well. You know, uh, it's a fantastic tool, Shotgun. And, uh, you know, the more you get a, a chance to, the more of you get a chance to kind of play around and see how it can uh, improve your, your pipeline and your workflow, the better. And uh, to Alan's point, you know, go, go to shotgunsoftware.com, create a site, um, give it a shot, break it, you know, and, and, uh, and then try again. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. Well, Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Hardest, hardest webinar I ever participated in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex, could you play a little piano on their way yes, out? Could you play us out, Alex, please? <laughs> Get powered up first. <laughs> yeah, you, just to add to that, if um, you can reach me, alex.arsay at autodesk.com. If anybody has any follow-up questions, I mean, these guys are amazing. They're pushing it. 
and doing really great work. So is Andy. So appreciate it. Make shotgun look great. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right. Coming up on Logic Live, nothing because we uh, did this today. Uh, the next big thing for Logic Live, I'm taking next week off. And then on Sunday, August 30th at 3 p.m. is the Logic Live Summer Party. If you haven't already uh, registered, please do. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, logic.tv slash 2020 Summer Party in the chat just so everybody has it. Boom. There you go. We're going to be giving away uh, a license of, uh, of a silhouette paint from Boris Effects to one lucky uh, attendee. It's going to be just a social event, no demos, no run-throughs. Everybody will be able to turn their camera on and, you know, we can put names to faces and just kind of hang out. Um, so please, please, please join. There's also a really big announcement. I'm going to uh, announce all uh, the Logic Live stuff that's lined up for September and some of October. And, uh, um, you know, a really big announcement that I've been working on for most of the summer. So definitely, please, if you haven't already RSVP'd, please do at logic.tv slash 2020 summer party. And once again, uh, the Logic Podcast. I have a new episode coming out on, uh, on uh, August 25th. It's going to be an interview I did with Alan and Jesse, which uh, they're probably regretting doing right now. But uh, it's going to be fantastic, and I, I'm really looking forward to that. If you haven't already subscribed to the uh, Logic Podcast on uh, Stitcher or Apple Podcasts, please do, or any of your... Um, yes, yes. Thank you, Randy. Please leave all five-star reviews um, <laughs> on any podcatching app of your choice. And of course, this will be up on Logic.tv later. You can find all the previous episodes of Logic Live there, as well as some great content. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. And thanks again to our friends at ActionVFX.com. And be sure to uh, check out their surprise sale this is from August 17th to the 20th, 25 to 50% off everything. These guys make great stuff. And thanks, as always, to Synesis for supporting Logic Live and the Logic community. That's going to do it. Guys, I'll see you on the 30th. Thanks so much.